Good morning, this is Regina. I'm getting ready to create a rod pocket for the back of my Christmas quilt. I have a previous video on my Christmas quilt. And I thought I'd show everybody how I go about doing that. So my metal rod is going to be three inches wide. So I need a pocket to slide that rod in on the back of my quilt. So I've created, I've cut two pieces of fabric. My quilt is 72 inches wide, and I've cut two pieces of fabric, eight inches wide, eight inches wide, and I've cut the length of, of my uh, width of the fabric, rather. I've cut the width of my fabric, which is 42 inches. So I'm going to end up cutting some of this off. And I've laid my one piece on top of the other and I've drawn a line because I don't sew straight and I've always done this and I've drawn a line from the intersecting edge on the top to the intersecting edge at the bottom and I'm going to sew on that line Let me get that going. oops pause so I'm going to sew on that line not, I'm right on top of the line. Pull my thread out of the way. Oh, come on, quit jumping. No, I don't sew very fast. I'm, this, I'm using a sew steady table to give me the extra sewing room. I love it, but sometimes when I stitch, it gets to jumping if I try to go too fast, which I don't like to do. All right, so because I drew the line from this corner to this corner, when I flip my fabric over, it meets up nice and pretty so you can cut this off by hand if you want I always use a ruler you do whatever you want I use the pins to keep the fabric uh, from moving and I'll be right back all right so I've laid out my fabric I don't want to cut any of this material off because then I'd be in trouble got one end laying down the table and one in across and I'm just going to use my roller to cut a quarter inch off lining up with the line that I already drew uh, I guess you can call me a perfectionist not really anymore <laughs> All right, I'll just trim that off now I have two half square triangles that I can do something with a patchwork or some other project all right, and I'm going to cut the dog ears off. And cut off on this side. All right, so when you go to the pressing table, you would open up this seam. Come on, open up. And press it down. Whoops. There we go. Sorry about that. So you would open up the seam, turn it over on the back, and press the seam open. Right, be right back. Okay, so as you can see, I pressed the seam open, and while I was at it, I went through and I pressed all the fold lines down. I steamed them down. Now I'm going to have to take this to the sewing machine. Fold right sides together, and I'm going to stitch a quarter inch line all the way down to the other end. I'll be right back. So before I go, I sew by tube in half, I'm going to turn a quarter inch seam and just actually just a teensy tad more than a quarter inch. 
and I'm going to press it in really well. And I'm going to sew, sorry, I'm going to press this down really well, and then I'm going to sew that quarter inch seam. Sorry about that. Got you seeing the back of my iron. All right, so I press that side down and turn this over and press this side. I use this Dritz Easy Hem and I've actually created me a quarter inch line down here so that I can, I etched it in and I'm going to sew this one over just a tad bit more. Oh shoot. All right, so I'm going to turn it a quarter inch down and steam it. And then I'm going to turn it one more time so I have a nice clean edge. And I don't have to worry about it fraying. Sorry. Let me turn this this way a little bit more. All right, so I've turned down a half inch, a quarter, and then another quarter. So I've got a half inch on that side. Now, I went back and I cut my tube to 72 inches to allow for that extra. I want it to be approximately 71. All right, so now I'm going to turn this down another quarter. And steam it. All right. And then I'm going to turn that down right along the edge. And sorry. And I'm steaming that. All right, so here I've turned it down a quarter and then another quarter. So that gives it a nice clean edge. Now I have my quarter inch foot put on and I moved my needle over just a tad so that it would not be in the exact center. And I'm going to stitch this uh, edge down. So when I put my rod pocket in, it doesn't fray the edge when I take it in and out because I use the same pocket for different quilts for each season. And I don't want that fraying. Start with my needle down. Take, oh, come on, hello. Hang on. All right, so. <clears throat> I'm going to stitch this down, go a few stitches. I'm going to back up. All right, so because I scooted over just a tad, it's catching right on the edge of that seam. probably can't see it but the stitch is right along the edge of that seam so I'm going to do the other side I'll be right back all right I have both ends stitched down turned over so they have a nice clean edge on the outside turn this off and I am going to sew the tube together now you can pin if you want to. I don't usually, especially when I'm using this quarter inch foot. All right. Let's go through there. Let's 
bakar all right so i just adjust as i go and that's about as fast as i like to sew just because i don't want it to get away from me and i know a lot of people sew really really fast and Just keep on adjusting and adjusting, getting those edges straight. So I've gone down about halfway now. As you can see, here's my joining seam where I put the two lengths of fabric together. I don't want that to stitch down. So. And I'm going to keep sewing until I get to the end. Okay, don't jump. Come on. Alright, so I'm just about to the end of this 72 inch long piece. Or actually now it's 71. And... go so now I'm going to take this to the sewing machine I mean to the pressing machine I hope that is right width if not I'm really going to be in trouble and I'm going to press this seam open just like I did the other one all right so I've started pressing the seam open see here and I just keep opening this tube and I kind of hold it apart. I just kind of hold it apart with my fingers. And give it a little tug and press that seam open. Hope you can see that. Move it down, open it up, kind of center it a little bit, it really doesn't matter, and I kind of press, press that apart with my fingers, pull it apart with my fingers, and then put my, open up my seam and hold this, hold the edges down, kind of giving it a little tug. That was my joining seam. Alright. And as you can see, it presses out nicely. And I just keep going on and on. Alright, so I'm almost finished. And I've got the end of it open and I've kind of pulled this out with my fingers pushed it out not pulled and I just kind of hold the ends of the fabric hot open I like steam and I'm not pushing down on it I'm just pushing gliding it across and here I am at the end let me scoot this down where I can reach it a little bit more open this end seam down open and give it a good pressing. All right, now I've got to open, turn, turn it inside out. All right, so I've hooked a large safety pin to the end of it, and I just am pushing that safety pin through until I have too much, pushing that safety pin through 
I'm gathering it up. Let me turn this way. So I'm gathering it up. And then I pull this way. And then I push. Push and push, push, push. And then just pull the fabric back down. Keep pushing it through. And then pull the fabric back that way. All right, so you just keep pulling all that through. Push. Keep pushing and pushing and pushing and pulling, pushing and pulling. And I'm grabbing hold of the safe, large safety pin on the inside. And I'll just keep pulling this open. And I'm getting close to the other end already. Let's see? Keep. I'm going to keep doing this until I get it turned in. All right, so I'm getting close. I just keep giving this fabric a tug, holding on to that safety pin. come through whenever I get to the other end. There we go. There we go. All right. Almost to the end. Get that back. All right. So I'm at the end. There's my safety pin. And you just keep pushing this fabric back down. And pulling up here. Now we can push and pull. Tugging on this end and pushing back on this end. Mind you, this is 70 some, 71 inches long, so. <clears throat> Sorry, I've got allergies. just have to keep pulling it out and here we are at the end and then turn that out and then you can go back to your pressing all right so I've got it completely turned turned out there's the other end the pan's still on there so let's see here we got a get the center of the seam. I like to have it on the back. So there's the center of my seam. And I need to get all this straightened out and take it to the pressing surface and press it open. I'll be back. All right, I've taken my sleeve to my pressing surface and I've gone through and tried to straighten it up because it's very wrinkled from being turned out and I'm going to press it all open and I like I said like to use a lot of steam and I'll just bring this all the way through straighten it up put that seam in the middle and press this down Sorry, somebody was calling me. Right. I've got the volume. Oh, do I have the volume down? All right, so I'm right towards the end now. And I've been going through and pressing this. Putting, this is the center seam right here. Just 
in here. That's the center seam. This is my other end. And I just, oops, sorry, this was left sitting straight up. Now it's got to get warm. So I'm just going to go ahead and press all the way to the end. Try to make sure your seams on the end are aligned. Is it hot? Yeah. All right, and finish giving it a good steaming. All right, so I've got it all pressed out. There's my other end. Both ends are straight. So now you put it with the seam side down on the back of your quilt, pin it, and hand sew it on. That's it for how to make a rod pocket for your quilt. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, post below. And don't forget to subscribe. Thanks a lot. Have a great day.